So as we start talking about consumer research, target market persona is something extremely important because we right now, as you start a business, you don't have any idea what's going, going on with your consumer or what kind of consumer research exists out there. So you will construct a target market persona, which is an imaginary person who will be buying our product. This person will have the traits and qualities of your, of your most ideal consumer. Generally, this takes days and weeks to make, um, and it's, it's a tedious job. You have to dig a lot of holes to find that ideal consumer. Luckily for us, we have ChatGPT, and we will be using our first prompt over here. So I'll be copying this and opening a new window for ChatGPT. I'll paste it over here. So. The prompt goes like, you are an expert digital marketer, the identity. Provide me with a comprehensive target audience persona for a marketing campaign aimed at selling. Instead of product, as usual, we will be writing our standing desk. Include the following information. Now, I'm giving ChatGPT exact information about what I want in my output, the demographics, the psychographics, the geographic location, professional background, pain points, life goals and aspirations, shopping habits and preferences, media consumption, favorite influencers and decision makers, and brand preferences. Assume that we have no prior data. Base the persona on general market trends and consumer behavior for standing desks market. Now, I, I have given all the assumptions to ChatGPT and I'm making sure that I have all the data points that I need to construct my marketing strategy or my digital marketing strategy because as, I, as you can see, there is a point about media, uh, media consumption. Uh, so we will know what sorts of media channels are our consumers using. Let's look into the details from the answer that ChatGPT gives us. At the end, give me suggestions for different niches to target to best sell this product. I want to look at niches that exist within this market so that I can target them and make the most revenue. So let's see what ChatGPT tells us. So ChatGPT has given me a multitude of information about my target market persona. It has given me the demographics, psychographics, geographic location, professional background, life goals and aspirations, favorite influencers, brand preferences, and then in the end, the niches as well that as I asked. So I would request all of you to pause the lecture over here, go through all of these details, and then I'll see you in about 10 seconds to discuss these in detail. I hope by now all of you have gone through the details, and now let's dive into them. As I can see the persona name, it says Active Professional Alex. Right away, I know that my ideal consumer likes to stay healthy and they're all working. The name Alex kind of suggests that there's, they might be skewing towards males. And as we look to, at, at the details of the data that ChatGPT has given us, it does say it's skewed, skewed towards males. Now you must have gone through all of these, I'm assuming. So now I am directly going to go towards their media consumption in order to make my communication strategy, or I would go towards their brand preferences, but most likely I would like to look at the niches that ChatGPT has provided me. I'm gonna go through them and I'm gonna see for any overlaps. Now for me, if I'm selling standing desks, I would most probably go towards home office enthusiasts because I see that it kind of encapsulates all those other uh, subgroups that are that are leaning towards living a healthy lifestyle. That all comes under this. So I'm going to prefer this as my uh, niche and I'm going to go after this in, in my consumer strategy, in my marketing strategy these target market personas if you're if you're starting your own business you clearly have a have an idea or or, or or a selection of personas that you can pick from which which target market persona you'd be going after but if you are let's say a digital marketer 
or you are a social media marketer, you are you can you can take these niches, these eight niches provided by ChatGPT, and you can take them to your to your manager or to your client. If you're working at an agency, you can take these to your client and you can ask them, okay, I have these eight personas. Which one do you want to go to go towards? Later on, for freelancers, you could use these personas. You can email them back to your client and you can say, which of these personas goes best for you? You could provide some descriptions using ChatGPT again, and you could provide these descriptions to your clients, say which of the persona goes best for you. And now you have saved a number of hours and you have added a number of dollars to your pocket because you saved those hours. So you'll have more clarity from your client and you can make a more efficient marketing strategy. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to, I'm going to discuss some consumer research tools in the next section and use ChatGPT to construct them and to collect data. Now I'm assuming that you've received an answer from your client or from your manager, or you've decided which niche you're going after for your business. The next step that you should take is start designing some consumer research tools which can be used to collect data. Now, the first thing that we can look at is a consumer survey. Surveys are a tool to collect quantitative data, which is numbers. These numbers can be crunched and can be analyzed later for further insights. In our case, we are going to start off with with this prompt. I'm going to I'm going to be using ChatGPT to to design my entire survey to include some pointers that will give me lots of good information that I can use to make my strategy. So the prompt goes like I'm going to remove this. It says you are the head of market research for a company that makes standing desks. Now I have replaced the identity of a digital marketer with a market research because now I want to make sure that ChatGPT gives me an output which is made by a researcher rather than a digital marketer. There is definitely a difference between the two. So in order to create its marketing strategy, the business needs to design a quantitative survey. The survey should be aimed at understanding the demographics, which is the age, income, location, etc., psychographics, which is the lifestyle, and spending patterns, which is grocery, health, luxury, tourism, eating out, etc., of the consumers of this product. Design the survey in a neat manner with a professional tone. Now, I have mentioned all the sorts of outputs that I want in the survey. I want to see the demographics, psychographics, and also spending pattern. I am including spending pattern because that is pretty sensitive to my consumer segment that I'm dealing with. Or I want to test and see what sort of a spending pattern they really have. If they are spending a lot and they're com comfortable spenders, then I have a I would have a different strategy in my marketing. If they are spend thrift, then I might as well not even look for such a target market. So let's see what ChatGPT gives us. ChatGPT has given me a very neat looking survey. All the outputs that I had asked, it has incorporated those and it has left these bullet points that you can you can extract these and then you can, you know, redesign this in a better manner. You can send this out. At this step, you will write this back to your client or write this back to your manager. You will show this whole survey to them and then you would get a review from them. Okay, I have pointed out these many, these many categories in which I'm asking questions and trying to collect data. What do you think about that? and then you will wait for their answer. I would suggest before you do that, try to add some descriptive questions to the survey as well. Descriptive questions would be that it would dig deeper into the existing uh, categories that we're trying to explore. So 
A good example of this could be a follow-up prompt which says, great work. Now let's add a few more descriptive questions at the end. So we were going to copy this, we're going to chat GPT, paste it here, and then let's see what chat GPT gives. In this specific case, I had said that descriptive questions at the end about consumers' daily routine and leisure time activities. So these are two specific categories that I have added. You could have something else. You have to decide which area of consumption you want to explore. Earlier, I had said that I want to look into the spending pattern of my ideal consumer. But now I am trying to go a step further and I'm going to include leisure activities as well so that I can get an idea of how how much my consumer is willing to spend spend on sort of a product which is adding value to your health and that is something premium so i am going to judge that through such descriptive questions and i'm going to add these to my survey and now i'll come back to my point that this is a good time to go back to your client or to your manager and provide them all these categories that you've set aside and you're trying to collect data on and get their feedback as to whether these categories satisfy the need of the brand and the market research being done. If we get this done to make our lives easier, I am going to prompt ChatGPT to combine, combine the outputs or the two surveys provided earlier or i could say combine all these sections from the last two responses into a single response let's see what ChatGPT does you may see that the fourth section that I had gotten added later on, it has been added to my actual survey. So now you can just copy and paste these and then follow my instructions to get feedback from your client, your manager, or your consumers for that matter. And then you can take your market strategy forward. Imagine that you did actually take the survey, you got your response from the client, you got to go ahead and you then you executed the survey. You can send mass emails, you could ask your client or your manager to assist you as well. Now imagine that you have already collected data and you have your results with you and I went and I kind of filled it out myself. It's a dummy, it's a dummy uh, case of collecting data. So imagine that you have your data collected in this manner and these are the many responses, the number of responses for every category that you got. Okay, so now one way that I want to teach you to analyze data is that you can then once you've tabulated all your data in this table form then what you can do is you can copy all of this right and then what we're going to do is we're going to ask chat gpt to give us important insights from all the data that we've collected do is i'm going to copy this table i'm going to go to back to chat gpt and now i'm going to from, it already knows that it's a market researcher right now. I haven't given it a separate identity as yet. So I'm assuming that it's, it's still a market researcher. Now I'm going to say that I am going to actually, let's start with great work. I always like to uh, commend ChatGPT for its performance so that my assistant works in the best possible way for me. So let's go get work, uh, great work. I am providing you data collected for this survey from 50 
respondents. I'm assuming that I have collected data from 50 respondents, although I have, mind you, this is a very small number of sample and ideally your sample number should be more than 100. I'm using 50 over here, 50 respondents. Now I'm going to paste the data that I have copied from, sorry, I'm going to go back, I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to paste it over here. Now I'm going to give it some instructions for my output as well. Please provide, actually let's say please analyze the provided data and then provide actionable insights that can be used to construct a marketing strategy for the business. Now we're going to see what ChatGPT does. And, and additionally, I'm also going to say that please provide findings in a table form. So that is just easier for me to read. I save time and I am more efficient. So now let's see what ChatGPT gives us. You can see that ChatGPT has given me in a very, very professional and neat manner, tables of demographics, of the insights, of the actionable insights, right? So one thing that I would point out here is that this would take a while for ChatGPT to process because you've told it to process a lot of information and then give you something very precise. So in, in such cases, it could be a little slower, but I would recommend that you close all other tabs such as YouTube or WhatsApp. If, if those are open on your PC, then I would recommend you close them so that ChatGPT gets most of the processing power and it can give you the answer uh, much quicker. But uh, don't be afraid if it's, you know, lagging a little because it, it might take a bit, but it will give you a very good answer uh, such as this. Now, if we go through this answer, we can see that it has now kind of tailored or kind of trimmed the data further and it, it is giving us some very good actionable uh, insights as to how we can cater to such groups uh, through our marketing. Uh, you can look at gender, you can look at annual household income. Now, I, I looked at the lifestyle and I, I, I see that there is an emphasis on health benefits, on ergonomic features from consumers who are health conscious. And this is one area since my target market persona was active professional Alex, then I would say that, yeah, this might be a, a one area that I could explore or I could look, I could then look at this whole category of health and fit, health and wellness. It says that create bundles or packages that include wellness products or services with standing desk uh, purchases. Hmm, interesting point. Now, this point is something that we can explore further. Maybe we can ask ChatGPT another follow-up prompt to let's explore this uh, insights that it has provided. The second consumer research tool we'll be talking about are interviews. Interviews can be understood as a lengthier or an expanded version of a survey where you're trying to dive deeper into the lived reality of a consumer. Now, with interviews, you will be asking ChatGPT for an interview guide rather than of a ready survey that was given to you before. The reason for this is that interviews are supposed to be organic conversations. So you will be given a few questions by ChatGPT. You have the option of going question by question, asking those with the consumers, but there's a chance that you might not be getting accurate and authentic results because you would be 
your questions, such guided questions might bias the interviewee. So let's dive deep into interviews. And in our case, we will be using this prompt and we'll be asking ChatGPT to provide us with an interview guide, which we will be using to collect some qualitative data. So I'm going to copy this prompt. We'll go to ChatGPT as usual. Put this over here. And then let's read out the prompt. So I've said that the business now, since it, it is already a market researcher and it already knows the context now, I am not going to mention the context again. And I'm saying the business, I'm going to type it in a manner that the context would become understandable to ChatGPT. So I go, the business now wants to explore the lived reality of potential consumers through qualitative interviews. Design an interview guide for the consumers of I'm going to put my product over here, which in my case is standing desk, and you could be putting in any product that you want. With the aim to explore consumer aspirations, belief systems as a consumer, and their spending behavior qualitatively, please design an interview guide for a one hour long interview. With interviews, you have to be very sure that the interview does not become too long because because the potential consumer that is interviewing might become too uninterested and might become bored by your questions. So you have to make sure that ChatGPT provides you something which will give you outputs from potential consumers that are round about a, an hour long. Then it goes, please include introductory questions in the beginning. Further, make the conversation sound natural and not scripted. So I'm telling ChatGPT that the output that I get with the questions that it gives me, they should sound organic and they should, uh, they should not be, you know, scripted. It should not sound scripted to the consumer because that can hurt the accuracy or the quality of outputs that you will get. So let's see what ChatGPT gives us when we prompt. So now, as you can see, ChatGPT has given me a good um, interview guide. It has also allotted minutes to uh, the different sections. So opening and icebreaker, there's two minutes, background and context, three minutes. So now you will have a rough idea of how much time you should be spending on every section. And as a tip, you could keep a timer with yourself while you're interviewing someone using this interview guide. You will use this to formulate either your own questions or we could even ask ChatGPT to give us the questions. So we could say now, provide me the questions for each section. Let's see what it says. So now I have detailed questions for every section of my interview. I, like I said, your interview should be organic and you will not be following this to the D. What you'll be doing is you'll review all these questions. So while you're doing the interview, as the conversation is progressing, you will have a fair idea, okay, what would be my next question? So this is why we are trying to build an interview guide with such questions so that you have an idea, but you won't be following this to the T. So, so as you can see, ChatGPT has given you questions which are very generic in the beginning. It asks about them, uh, about their daily routine, about you know their general lifestyle, and then it dives deeper into work and lifestyle aspirations, their health and wellness goals, because we are focusing on that niche. So it has focused on that. Now it. It then dives into the product beliefs and here it is bringing in standing desks, right? It asks what do you believe uh, are the potential benefits of using ergonomic products. It has given a product category before giving it a pro the product right away. Are there any concerns or drawbacks you associate with them? Then another question on standing desks, right? But after that, if you see, it quickly goes into generic questions again. When evaluating a product's value, what factors do you consider most important? What influences uh, you to in invest in a particular product? 
So when I'm interviewing, I will be looking for such generic questions because I, again, I want the conversation to be organic rather than scripted. So, and if I add too much of standing desk in there, then the conversation might become very boring and it could imply that you are hell bent on just selling the product rather than engaging with the consumer, rather than getting to know the consumer, getting to know their pain points, getting to know their lifestyle, their media consumption. So it has to be a very organic and generic quest, uh, conversation. And it, does, it should not imply that you are trying too hard to sell. Now, once you have this list of questions and your interview guide, it would be safe to write back to your manager if you're working at an agency or to your client if you're a freelancer that I have this list of questions, go through them and tell them whether they're relevant, whether you see any issues, any problems, and then you can address those. If your manager or your client writes back and they have the expectation that you conduct the interviews, then, like I told you, they have to be conversational, they have to be organic, and now you have to dive into conducting the interviews, finding these potential consumers, and then collecting data. Now, let's suppose that you have collected your data or your client has sent data back to you and it looks something like this in the case of standing desks. So I was able to collect interviews with 10 people and I got my data like this. Now, if, if you can see, I have tried to synthesize my data and you can do this with ChatGPT as well. You can, once you've collected all the data, if you have 10 interviews ready in the form of text, you have to transcribe them, type them out, and then you can feed all those 10 interviews into ChatGPT and tell ChatGPT to give you some conclusions or some findings about the interviews like I did with my 10 informants. So I copy these and I take them to ChatGPT and I say, I am uploading summarized findings from data collected to qualitative interviews. All right, we're going to paste it over here. And then we're going to say, can you provide me your understanding about these findings. Let's check whether ChatGPT understands what we have provided it. As you can see, ChatGPT has gotten a very good understanding of the data I provided. This is prob most probably a summary of the data I provided, but I have fed the data into ChatGPT and now I can dive deeper into all the details that I have from the 10 informants I interviewed, my interest for it, just as an example, goes towards the health and productivity or in the spending behavior. So it says that the perception of a standing desk as an investment in health and productivity is shared by most eight informants, emphasizing the value placed on these aspects. This translates to 80% of the interview is having an interest in standing desk because of health benefits and because of productivity. Now, consumer journey, it, its very basic form can be understood by an example. Imagine if you're buying something, let's say a phone. So the process you go through from the moment that you think about getting a new phone to actually making that purchase is what is called a consumer journey. It is all the different steps that you go through as a consumer whenever you're buying a product. 
So in order to find out what consumer journey is applicable to our product, we'll be using our first prompt. I'll take my prompt from here, I'll copy it, and as usual, we'll go to ChatGPT, and I'm, I'm gonna say, you are a sales and marketing expert. Now, one important thing, since this is a very marketing and sales specific role to create a customer or a consumer journey, I have given it the identity of a sales and marketing expert. And I expect that you will be changing this identity as well as your requirement changes. So the prompt goes on. I want you to create the consumer journey for my product over here. I am going to write standing desk. And you will be writing whatever product you have. If you're going with a standing desk, that's amazing. And then I will be selling these through channel. So over here, I'm, I will be selling my standing desk through e-commerce. So I'll write e-commerce over here because you should understand that ChatGPT needs to know the marketing channel being used so that it can devise you the, the most accurate sort of consumer journey for the product that you're asking for. So let's see what we get from ChatGPT. So now we have around nine steps in our consumer journey for a standing desk. If you can read through these, which is extremely important, and I would recommend that you go through each and every step so that you can once again understand your own business in a very good manner, let's go through them. So the first step is awareness, and it says that online presence, establish a strong online presence through a user-friendly website, engaging social media profiles, and possibly a blog that highlights the benefits of standing desks. We have already created that blog. Then social media marketing, utilize social media platforms to showcase product features, share customer testimonials, and post informative content about the advantages of using standing desks. Then the second step is interest. Here comes educational content, okay? It says create blog posts, infographics, and videos that delve deeper into the ergonomic benefits, la la la. Then it says email campaigns. Implement email campaigns with valuable content, product updates, and exclusive promotions to keep potential customers engaged. What this shows is that the consumer journey throughout a journey of a consumer, you have to communicate using different channels for every different step of the consumer, because this makes it more interesting. So for the sake of this course, now I'm going to be showing you the usage of all these different platforms in all the steps, which I will show you through email marketing as it's the most basic form of marketing that can be done. And then I'll go one step forward and I'll also show you how to create Instagram posts, Facebook posts, LinkedIn posts, and then YouTube and TikTok scripts that can be used to make video content. And then you'll be using all these to create your marketing strategy or your communications through the marketing channels. Once I've explained all these, I will be taking you towards the creation of a content calendar for the whole month or for the whole year, just the way we did for blogs. And for this, I would like to show you that in this part, I will cover exploration of new ideas by cross-questioning with ChatGPT, and then also implementation of these steps into our strategy.